It is June 2nd, 2024, and this is Political Dharma with Alan Zundell. I have some updates for you. One has to do with Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s progress in getting on the ballot in another state, and as well as lawsuits he's bringing in a couple of other states, and then some more on the Libertarians for Kennedy and their attempts to get a co-nomination between the party's official nominee and the Kennedy-Shanahan ticket, and finally a couple of odds and ends that I have to update you on as well, uh, one of them being Kennedy's statement about the Trump conviction in the trial happening in New York. So let's start first of all with the um, Kennedy's progress in South Carolina here. He, his campaign announced that he gained ballot access in South Carolina through the nomination of the Alliance Party. The Alliance Party came out of the um, combination of several smaller parties that merged in 2018, about six years ago. This also was confirmed in the May 31st Independent Political Report that had a little bit to say about the background of the Alliance Party. So there's another state which now gives him with New York and Florida and New Jersey if you add the Alliance Party to that, he has met the requirements in enough states to have a hypothetical 262 electoral college votes, which is just eight short of the 270 he would need uh, to be included in, a, in the presidential debate if CNN decides to allow him for those presumptive states in which the states haven't actually verified the signatures yet, but he did collect plenty of signatures in those states. And I did not include the state of Nevada, which I'll be talking about in a minute, which would bring up the total another six votes. So that would be 268, just too short of the needed votes to have a hypothetical majority in the Electoral College. Um, the Alliance Party of South Carolina had this to say, and this is from the Independent Political Report, which uh, has a lot of good stories about this, all of them by the same author, Jordan Willow Evans. Uh, After thoroughly reviewing Biden and Trump's past performance in office, their platforms, and their extremely narrow, ultra-partisan view of how democracy should be allowed to work to benefit all Americans, we believe Robert F. Kennedy Jr. to be the only logical choice for president, said Jim Rex, the national chair emeritus of the that uh, alliance party. So that uh, that gets Kennedy even closer to the goal of being able to say that he has uh, a chance of winning in the Electoral College and a chance of getting in the presidential debates, depending on how the uh, CNN network decides to go with that. Um, also, he I forgot to mention this last time around when I talked about him getting on the ballot in New York. He did bring a lawsuit against the state of New York. Let me put that up here. This is from the campaign, once again, that he filed a lawsuit on May 29th, which I think was, let me think back, Thursday? Uh, No, Wednesday. Uh, The campaign filed a lawsuit against New York, even though they did get like three times the number of signatures they needed to get on the ballot. The lawsuit is claiming that the there's the the laws the the requirements for getting on the ballot of New York are too stringent, and there's not enough time for a party most parties to realistically meet them or most candidates to realistically meet the requirements. So he's suing New York. This won't benefit his campaign, but it could benefit other campaigns, especially going into the future if he wins that lawsuit. Now, in the state of Nevada, which I've often often mentioned. There is this, again, from the campaign, uh, from the Kennedy campaign. They are suing the state of Nevada. Now, if you recall, in Nevada, Kennedy asked them ahead of time if he needed a uh, vice president president to be on the signature sheets, and they told him no. Some clerk in the office told him no. So they went out and collected plenty of signatures, but then they were told that this is against uh, the law, that they do have to have a vice presidential candidate. So Kennedy is suing Nevada and saying that requiring them to put a vice presidential candidate on the ticket so much earlier than when the major party nominees 
uh, actually choose their vice presidential candidate, which would happen at their nominating conventions later in the summer, is unfair to other parties. Uh, having them choose a vice president really early when the major parties don't have to do that is unfair. Also, they're complaining that on these signature sheets, there is no room for more than one candidate. So you can put in the presidential candidate and there's no place to put a vice presidential candidate. Finally, they're also arguing that the $250 filing fee, which is kind of low, serves no purpose. So that's also unequal because... Uh, Major parties don't have to do that to get on the ballot. So in all those respects, they're saying there's problems with the ballot access laws, and they bring in a lawsuit to try to rectify those and also to get Nevada in their quiver of states that they're getting, um, that they're, they're, they're getting electoral votes in or they could potentially get electoral votes in. So that's it for progress. A, the Alliance Party of South Carolina got him on the ballot, and then he brought lawsuits against New York, even though he got enough signatures there, and Nevada, which is blocking him from getting his signatures to count towards getting him on the ballot in that state. So in my last show just a few days ago, I think it was Wednesday, uh, I talked a lot about how a group within the Libertarian Party, the Libertarians for Kennedy, made a proposal for some kind of grand bargain in which the party would co-nominate Kennedy Shanahan along with Chase Oliver, their official presidential nominee, and Mike Termott, who is their official vice presidential candidate, and it was kind of unclear how they saw that working. But this, uh, a few days later, the independent political report, again, Jordan Willow Evans reporting on this, updated her original report on it, producing an email from the Libertarians for Kennedy explaining to the National Committee of the Libertarian Party, how they expected this would work. So here's the headline of the story, and it's it looks similar to the one I showed last time, but it is an updated version that the Libertarians for Kennedy, this caucus or group within the Libertarian Party, is explaining the Libertarian, how, how they see this co-nomination process working. So this is from their email that was published in the article. And if you look at the parts that I highlighted, they're saying that a candidate's nomination may be suspended by a three-quarters vote of the entire membership of the National Committee at a meeting, meaning that the Libertarian Party's National Committee could get together in a meeting, probably online would be sufficient. And then if three-quarters of them wanted to suspend the nomination of Chase Oliver and Mike Termott, they could do that. Now, the, uh, the second part of this that I've highlighted says that two-thirds of the National Committee then, at a, at a meeting, probably the same meeting, could fill in the presidential and vice presidential vacancy because there was a suspension that allows them now to replace them. And in doing that, what they would do is actually say that, um, sorry, uh, in doing that, what what they would who they would then nominate is both Kenny and Oliver and Shanahan and um, Termott for the vice president's position. So Kennedy and Oliver for the vi for the president, and then Shanahan and Termott for vice president. That way, because both of them had been nominated, states could decide which way they want to go and who they actually want to put on their ballot. They could either go with the Kenny Shanahan ticket or the Oliver Termott ticket, depending on the needs of that particular state. Now, they did say that they also have to have the agreement of the presidential and vice presidential candidates, that would be Oliver and Termott, voluntarily participating in this bargain uh, and the co-nomination that they're proposing. Now, is that likely to happen? I'm, I'm going to... Uh, produce some evidence to the contrary, but it's worth thinking about that, you know, maybe this is something that could take actually take place, at least in some states where they, the uh, Libertarians for Kennedy probably have a stronger presence or at least positions a higher in the state hierarchy in particular states. Now, when I compared the, the number of states in which the Libertarians have currently have ballot access and Kennedy does not, I came up with something in the realm of 20, um, 
20 states, uh, 20 something states here, 23 states plus the District of Columbia. So they only need some of them in order to help Kennedy get enough um, electoral, potential electoral votes to be included in the debates. Maybe there's enough of those people in the states to do that. They're also worried, these libertarians for Kennedy are also worried that in certain states that their, their official nominees now, the libertarians who they nominated, would not get an, enough percentage of the vote, especially with Kennedy in the race, as a, pro, as a potential protest vote. They would not get enough of a percentage in the, in the national election to retain ballot access in some states. So those states may be more willing to add uh, Kennedy and Shanahan rather than their official nominees now. Uh, so that still seems to be an open possibility, but the two things we don't know are, number one, if the National Committee will go along with this scheme, that would include, um, it's dominated by the Mises Caucus, who are not backers of the nominee that actually won at the convention. The uh, Chase Oliver was not their first pick, and they seemed a little put out that their pick, Michael Rechtenwald, did not win, and Oliver won instead. So they may have it out for Oliver. They may be willing to go along with suspending him and his running mate in order to do this. I'm not sure how they feel about Kennedy. They were not boosting Kennedy for the nomination, and Kennedy only got 19 votes at the convention. So that doesn't say a lot of support in the first round of counting. Not a lot of people there really pushing for Kennedy. So I'm not sure how much clout this Libertarians for Kennedy group actually has. And even more importantly, if it requires the participation of Chase Oliver and his running mate in this scheme, well, I looked at Chase Oliver's website, his campaign website, and he addressed this back in April, the Kennedy uh, attempt to get the Libertarian nomination, and he did not have complimentary things to say about Kennedy. Let me put up some of those. Um, first of all, here's the press release that his campaign put out on April 3rd. RFK Jr. has no libertarian appeal, and they have a quote from him saying that it should be crystal clear now that RFK Jr. isn't seeking the libertarian nomination based on his choice of a running mate, meaning that he felt that the choice of uh, Nicole Shanahan did not show any kind of affinity with libertarian values. Rather, she seems to be more of a social liberal and then he went on to say in that press release that Kennedy can't rely on his name because the libertarians aren't going to be impressed by that. He can't rely on the issues he's taking a stance on because they run against libertarians in a number of areas. They, he mentioned specifically gun control and government control. Uh, I'm not sure why he's saying government control because it seems to me that Kennedy is, well, he's saying getting corporations out of the government's uh, out of lobbying the government and trying to control government agencies, but not rolling back government regulations. And finally, he's saying that Kennedy hasn't done anything for the party. He hasn't been showing up at their meetings. He's not really uh, a member of the party, although he became some kind of um, like secondary member status uh, eventually. Um, I forget what they call it, like, uh, you know, your, your affiliate, I guess, of the party rather than a full member. Uh, he hasn't really done anything to build up the party, and et cetera, et cetera. So uh, Chase Oliver does not seem very friendly to RFK in that press release. One more bit from that. He, um, he says, what has RFK done for libertarians? Big, fat, zero. I've seen zero interest from delegates over RFK Jr., says Oliver. At every state convention, one of the most unifying things in the room is the sound rejection of selling our party and our principles out to RFK. So, not very uh, promising start to considering whether that's a feasible thing. So I wouldn't expect much to come of it, but we'll see if this Libertarians for Kennedy group can actually um, get this to advance in some way. Not counting on it, but keeps the race interesting once again. Finally, uh, let me first turn um, to what RFK had to say about the Trump convictions at the trial that was held in New York recently. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of that, and it was a historic 
event that a former president was found guilty in a trial and is now a convicted uh, criminal. Of course, they'll be appealing it, and who knows where it's going to end up finally. But Kennedy, on his Twitter account, now called X, on his X account, he had to say that the Democratic Party's strategy to beat President Trump in the courtroom rather than the, at the ballot box will backfire on them and is profoundly undemocratic. He wants to uh, win against Trump on the issues rather than against this kind of lawfare against him, against Trump. So, Kennedy's statement about that I thought was worth presenting for a couple of reasons because this is a, um, a historic event and his view of that is important to understanding Kennedy's mindset. But I kind of wrestled with this because he makes a lot of statements on various events and issue positions, and I haven't been covering those yet. I've mostly been focusing, I can only do so much and do the research on so much. I've been focusing on the horse race aspect of the race so far, seeing how far Kennedy's getting in his ballot access and on that level and the other parties as well, who they're going to nominate. So it looks like the three primary alternative candidates, that is alternatives to the major party, are going to be Kennedy as an independent candidate, Jill Stein of the Green Party, and Oliver Chase, or Chase Oliver, excuse me, of the Libertarian Party. And I will be covering them in the near future, their policy positions and comparing the various candidates, including Biden and Trump, so we can get a sense of where they all stand. Um, but I... I don't usually editorialize on any of that stuff, but in this, I thought it was important because it's an historic event, and also because I'm uncomfortable with Kennedy's position on this. Now, it's the, not the only area in where I might disagree with Kennedy. doesn't mean I would write off Kennedy and not vote for him in the November election. It just means it's an area where I have a different opinion on this. I'm not going to go deeply into that and editorialize, only to say that when a jury unanimously convicts somebody of something, it doesn't look to me like this is purely a partisan thing. It looks like there really is a issue here of breaking the law. My opinion, I said I wasn't going to editorialize and I already started. So there's that. I do disagree with Kennedy in a few areas, but still I think so far he looks like he has the best chance of actually doing something to break down the two-party duopoly, the, their monopoly on political power, and then to, if he gets in office, actually do a, a lot of good things, which I think are extremely important, aside from areas, one area or another, where I might disagree with him. And finally, on Joe Biden and his attempts, uh, his efforts to get on the ballot in Ohio, the Ohio legislature, both the House and Senate, did finally pass a bill changing the deadline for a presidential nominee to get on their ballot. So they fixed that problem. I expect the governor this coming week will sign that bill. And so this remains to be seen. What remains to be seen? It remains to be seen if the Democratic Party then goes through with the plan to have a virtual nomination online instead of waiting until their presidential uh, convention or their national convention to nominate Joe Biden. One way or another, it'll say something about the party, right? Either if he sticks with the plan for a virtual nomination, it says that he has other reasons for doing it other than the Ohio problem. And if they abandon it, that kind of says that, well, they're fine doing it at the convention. They're not as worried about that. Maybe reasons for Joe Biden to be worried about what's going to happen at the convention. But as we get closer to that, that's in August, four ways off, we'll take a look at that. So... That's it. That's what I got for you this uh, today. And I did this on Sunday because I want to get back to trying to do a once a week on the weekend episode. Uh, I'm pretty busy getting ready to move. I already, we, my wife and I sold our house, so we got to get all the stuff out of it and then into storage. And then we're looking for a, a place to buy and then we got to move all of it in there. So I'll be pretty busy trying to limit this to uh, once a week on the weekend may end up having to do short updates instead of the longer episodes. I don't know yet. Thanks for watching. If you're new to this, subscribe if you want to continue to follow these events with me. Uh, if you like this video, like it, all that kind of stuff. And that's it for this week. Thanks a lot, and bye. Please.
Cause I see the chains are breaking We gained our focus, the moves we're making We'll prove to determine our self-worth As a passenger on the vehicle earth